Hi, welcome to Why Measurement Uncertainties Are Important. In this video, we'll discuss why it's important to understand the error bars on a measurement. In particular, measurement uncertainties are critical when trying to distinguish between competing scientific theories. Here, we'll use a physics example. We'll see how measurement uncertainties can determine how we interpret the results of an experiment. Okay, let's get to the example. So, let's say you are measuring the lifetime of a particular subatomic particle. We have two models, and we want to know if either of them accurately describes nature. So, model A predicts the lifetime of the particle to be 4.2 microseconds, and model B predicts the lifetime to be 5.0 microseconds. You measure the lifetime and obtain 4.2 microseconds. So, let's ask two questions. First, have you confirmed model A? And second, have you disproven model B? Let's look at two scenarios with very different error bars. Okay, so again, model A's prediction was that the lifetime was 4.2 microseconds, and model B's prediction was 5.0 microseconds, and your measurement was 4.2 microseconds. So let's look at scenario one. So in this case, your measurement error bar was 0.1 microseconds. Model B in this case, which predicts a lifetime of 5.0 microseconds, clearly disagrees with the data. So if your experimental result stands up to further checks, you've disproven model B. On the other hand, we have not confirmed model A. In the future, we may have yet another model, model C, which also predicts a lifetime very close to 4.2 microseconds. Maybe model C is the correct one, or at least more correct than model A. So we cannot say that we confirm model A. What we can say is that the data are consistent with model A. Okay, so now let's look at a second scenario. Again, model A's prediction is 4.2 microseconds, model B's prediction is 5.0 microseconds, and your measurement was 4.2 microseconds. But this time, the uncertainty on your measurement is one microsecond. In this case, both Model A and Model B are consistent with the data. We can't rule out either of them. Our conclusions about which models are consistent with the data depend on our error bars, and different error bars will lead to different conclusions. In fact, these examples were a little simplistic. The theoretical predictions of these competing models probably had error bars as well. Perhaps our initial problem should be more like Scenario 3, where Model A predicts the lifetime to be 4.2 plus or minus 0.5 microseconds, and Model B predicts the lifetime to be 5.0 plus or minus 1 microsecond, and you measure the lifetime and obtain 4.2 plus or minus 0.1 microsecond. So in this case, while the measurement is very precise, it can't distinguish between Models A and B the errors on the theoretical predictions are too big for the measurement to be useful. In this case, it makes sense to first put effort into reducing the errors on one or both of the models. Then the experimental result can be useful. So situations like this can have practical consequences. Experiments cost money. And so it may not make sense to build an experiment until the errors on the theoretical predictions are under better control. So, what can we conclude from this example? If we want to experimentally distinguish between two or more hypotheses, the error bars from all sources must be small enough for the measurement to disfavor at least one of them. And a measurement with a huge error bar is barely a measurement at all. Additionally, a measurement without an associated error bar doesn't tell us whether or not we can rule out any hypotheses. So it's very important that we always need to report error bars along with results. Now, why don't we hear much about error bars in science stories in the popular press? Well, the answer is we should. Unfortunately, this is often ignored or not emphasized in science stories for the general public. Scientific results would be communicated more accurately if science journalists made a consistent practice of reporting and explaining error bars. This would also give a much better idea of how new hypotheses replace old ones. 
Okay, so to summarize, knowing the size of these uncertainties is important in knowing how good your measurement is. The uncertainty size may render a measurement useful or not, depending on how you intend to use that measurement. The important thing is to understand how the uncertainty affects your conclusions.